pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, cool, please. Supervisor oh. Vecchio? Here. Councilman McCarthy? Here. Councilman Creighton? Here. Councilman Malloy? Here. What's first here? Yeah. Public hearing sound board to consider deleting in its entirety chapter 323 of the code and entitled transfer of development rights. Good afternoon, Supervisor Vecchio, members of the town board. For the record, my name's David Flynn. I'm the Assistant Director of Town Planning. I'm here today to explain the um, proposed amendment to the Town Code. As you may recall, Chapter 323 is, uh, has to do with the transfer of density flow rights. The Town Board first adop adopted it on February 9, 2010. Um, basically, it was a rather new ordinance at that time. We suggested that the Town Board adopt it, see how it works and as time goes on, amend it uh, based on the experience that, we've, that we receive. In the course of the time since it's been adopted, uh, we have found some ways that we think it could be improved. Uh, just to back up a little bit, as just from an explanation standpoint, the proposed amendment has tons of details, but I think it would be better, the town board would be better served by me summarizing them. And also, by way of background, the TDFR ordinance uh, basically is a uh, technique to do three things at the same time, to preserve open space, to revitalize uh, the town's older downtown areas, and to protect uh, the public health via the public water supply. The proposed uh, amendments basically are to try to accomplish about five things. One is, is to uh, simplify the ordinance. A second thing is to uh, reduce the cost of administering it, to reduce the number of person hours that it takes to go through applications. A third um, matter is to make it more predictable uh, with respect to what is or what isn't allowed. And I just need to refresh my memory. Um, a fourth way is to make the process more transparent. And lastly is uh, to codify a way of placing a value on rights, on uh, transfer of flow rights that the town currently owns. So if the town wanted to sell rights, there would be a method uh, of calculating it, uh, them simply and uh, in a predictable way. That's really a summary. If you'd like, I'd go in more detail. But this yep. is the kind of uh, amendment that doesn't change policy, really. It's, it's uh, hopefully it will streamline <coughs> the process for your staff and for the public that uses it. OK, I don't have any questions. Anyone in the audience wish to be heard? I'll move to close the hearing. Say. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Malone? Yes. Okay. The second public hearing is to consider proposed amendments to Chapter 322 of the Code entitled Building Zone Ordinance as it relates to Article 3 district regulations. <laughs> Again, Mr. Supervisor and members of the Town Board, uh, David Flynn, Assistant Town Director of Planning. The, uh, this amendment is a companion amendment to the previous one. In the zoning ordinance, there's a section that says that any violation of an approval is a violation of that chapter. In the TDFR chapter of the town code, there's no similar provision. And it's my understanding that the town attorney thought the most efficient way to um, implement the policy is to amend it in Chapter 322 by cross-referencing Chapter 323. Did I confuse what I intended to say on that one? Nope. So it's just a cross-reference 
of the matter that I was here on a few moments ago. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? I'll move to close the hearing. Second. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Um, this is the second reading for the following three uh, events. Nessacock River State Park Sunset, Ministerio Jesu Cristo Viva Walk, second reading, Kings Park High School Home Copying Parade, second reading. Uh, does anyone know on uh, number two, was that route changed? Um, Mr. Supervisor, I received a call this morning from people who represent this organization, and I advised them to please come to the meeting today to state that they agree to be um, off the state roads okay. and on the sidewalks. I don't know if they've arrived. Is anybody here on, uh, with from that organization? Okay, we'll just proceed. Anybody here wish to be heard for against those? Okay, what we'll do for first readings is Wood Park Memorial School, VFW Elwood Comac Post, Smithtown Elementary PTA Bike Safety Rodeo, and Smithtown Chamber of Commerce running of the bull. Mr. Supervisor? Yes. Pardon me. I just received uh, somebody to speak, a Belize from the ministerial. Okay. Belize is here. Please come up. It's Boris Castiblanco. Are, are you aware of the problem with your application? Um, I'm not really aware of it, but I would like to find out what is going on. Okay, with it. well, these events that we just read are uh, sent to the police department for their input. On your application, the police department said that your route is too disruptive to traffic, et cetera, mm -hmm. and they advised that we should allow give the permit only if your walk takes place on the sidewalk. Am I correct? That's right. If we change the route. No. The route. No, change the same route, but you would walk on the sidewalk, not in the roadway. So I think, what's the best uh, advice we can give her? To call the police department, tell them that? Because we have to rule on this next week, right? Yes, and um, it should be probably in writing. That's mine. Yeah, they should amend their route to us. With the Could you do that? Could you Not route, but indicate pattern. that the route you're taking is going to be on the sidewalk and not in the roadway in writing to here to this board? You can do that? Yes. Okay. And I will ask you to do that. And do it as quickly as possible. Okay. Okay? I'm also waiting for my pastor to come. All right, then let's wait for the so pastor. If he comes, he probably would like to okay, speak to you Okay, sure. Also. Okay. Thank you. Okay, on the other ones, does anybody wish to be heard? We'll move on. How about to authorize the clerk for advertise the following bids? Thank you. I did leave off uh, a parade uh, run walk permit first reading for the Comac Ambulance Corporation. Okay? Also, we have a building department report which is available in the clerk's office. On number one, town board to authorize the clerk to advertise for bids on bailing wire, mulch bags, and material handler. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Town Board to order the following bids and authorized purchases of associated goods and services, a bid for copy lease Toshiba Business Solutions, a bid for lumber and plywood to East Islip Lumber, a bid for opening and closing a swimming pool complex. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. A town board also to authorize a clerk to advertise for the following request for proposals to be returned to town hall. Um, an RFP for uniform cleaning services and returned on May 2nd. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. 
Town Board after due study and deliberation of the subject record. Desires to issue a secret negative declaration determination for the following matter on the Town Board's own motion to approve the Smithtown Highway Department 2013 road program dated April 2nd. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Town Board to approve the following 5A through Q. A would be minutes of approval of March 5th, 2013. Department of Public Safety, lease of two copiers, amendment to the agreement with the Civil Services Employees Association. D, in accordance with Article 6, Section of Town Code Performance Bond. Town Clerk issue a parade one pork permit for Nessaqua River State Park Foundation. Kings Park Homecoming Parade approval. Town County two man, the town attorney to retain the services of John S. as realty appraisal, extension of professional services agreement, amendment of the Civil Services Employee Association full time unit local 852 regarding wage and salary plan. J amendment between the town of Smithtown and Fundamental Businesses Services Inc. The supervisor to enter into a collective bargaining agreement with the Smithtown Administrative Guild in accordance with memorandum of agreement executed by the supervisor and SAG on March 1st, 2013, on a form approved by the town attorney. L. Louis A. Necroto and Kathy Corr to attend Long Island Spring Seminar. Supervisor Patrick R. Vecchio to execute memorandum of agreement with Cornell Cooperative Administration and Dr. Chris Epplick and Chris Field of the University of Connecticut. O, adoption of highway road program. P, rental of a wheel loader. And Q, amendment of the pallet, agreement with pallet patch distributors. Councilman Malloy. Oh, okay, I, go ahead. I move the table, K. Oh, and, yeah, oh you want the table anyway. And vote yes on all of the others. Do I have a second? Yes. Motion? Okay, on the table. Oh. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? No. Supervisor Vecchio? No. Motion failed. On the rest? Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. I have number six, the town board to authorize the acceptance of the following. C a, Senior Citizens Department donation. B, Cash and Law Performance Bond. C, escrow. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. I had number seven, the town board to authorize the controller to execute the following as per seven, A through D, a transfer, increase, and create an account, a transfer, and a transfer. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. I had number eight, the town board to authorize supervisors to execute the following in a form approved by the town attorney as per eight A, B, C, D, and E. Town clerk to issue a special event permit agreement with Horizons Counseling Center, agreement with Horizons Counseling Center, satisfactions of mortgages, and agreement with fire districts. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. I have number nine, a town board to approve settlement in the following matters per recommendation of the town attorney has per nine A, B, C, and D of the printed agenda, $5,000, dollars $6,879.64, $7,500 and $4,269.72. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. I have number 10. Town Board to authorize the release of the following release of cash payment as amount of $6,967 as per the printed agenda. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. I had number 11 under personnel. 11A through G, voluntary change in title, part-time appointment, medical leave, change in title, part-time appointment, seasonal appointments, and full-time appointment. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Uh, I have two other town board to approve work sessions at, beginning at 10 a.m. on the following dates, May 7, June 4th, July 16th, August 13th, September 10, October 8th, November 5th, and December 17th. Yeah, well, it's going to be a, we're scheduling a work session May 7th, June 4th, 
July 16th, August 13th, September 10th, October 8th, November 5th, and December 17th. Okay? Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. We also have a resolution for award of a RFP for the caterer for senior citizens food service to Zahn's Kosher Deli restaurant as per the proposals returned on March 3rd. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, I will uh, now read um, the Board of Water Commissioners and it's uh, transfers as per one and two in the St. James Water Districts on each. Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes, and now we'll meet as a Board of Site Plan Review and the Town Board sitting as a Board of Site Re Plan Review to consider Garden Grill East Side North, of North Country Road uh, legalization of site work and a proposed 334 of one store addition to a restaurant. I don't know what that means. Square foot. Square, Square foot? foot. Yeah. Square okay, foot, yes. thank you. Um, Councilman Malloy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Is the bishop here? Did you say yes. Or the pastor? Yes. Would you come up, sir? Pastor, I explained to the member of your church you. um, earlier, these permits uh, that we approve go to the police department for review. Yes, sir. The police department has objected to the ministerial using the roadway for its walk, but recommends that we allow you to do that, except you will walk on the sidewalks. Is that okay with you? Yes, please. It for us, it's literally impossible for us because we got to be having more than 100 people uh, coming to Isley to Smithtown. In the meantime, is we got to be having like uh, some type of uh, truck, people in the top. Uh, in one direction, it's impossible for us in the sidewalk because some sidewalk, some street, they don't have no sidewalk. And what we're looking for is that we can have the opportunity to have one police, two police car, one in the front, one in the back, and we got to be submit, you know, when the, when the light is red, we stop, when the light is green, we continue. In the meantime, this is a great opportunity for unity over here in Central Isley, in Smithtown. Uh, we believe the uh, we, the, now you allow us to do that, and when we bring the police together, they know us very well in uh, the police department in, in Brentwood, in Fifth Avenue, because we, we dropped the crime 42% where we are, because we have a, a program calling Rescue the Youth. So what we do is we went out to rescue a teenager for gang, drug, and graffiti, and we rescued all these teenagers, and we put in the program. And then we put it back this teenager to the community to clean the, the community back when they did it. So the police know us very well in Fifth Avenue, how we how work it, we do. So it's an opportunity for us to bring the unity. A New York, right now, the, the, that unity. Right now, now the ever, this is the time for us. Yeah, I believe we deserve the same right, like a, every group have it, to have it at least one day a year to walk to one place to other place, in Pacific, pray for our nation, pray for our town. Okay. May I interrupt you? Yes. It, it, it's, it's not our desire to ever deny these kinds of permits. Yes. But we are guided by the police department who has to police the parade. And it's their recommendation that we do not issue the permit because that route is a very heavily traveled road. Yes, sir. And uh, I suspect it would test their manpower uh, they may not have enough people, so um, maybe you can find another route. Yes, we. It, it's just opportunity for us. We can pay a special security for that special day. 
we had the finances to do that, and we had all the, uh, the logistics to do that day. We believe that for, if the police need any extra personal for that day, the church, we allowed to pay whatever we had to be paid. Okay. So if this is the issue, no, we have the money. No, it's not the issue. Yeah. Uh, my, my guy suggested, you, know, you fellas talking about, why don't you go visit the 4th Precinct? It's in Hop Park on Route 347. Yes, Explain to the commanding officer there what you're saying here. If he sends us a letter okaying what you're requesting, we'll be happy to approve it. But we need to have that immediately. When is the parade? What day is it? We, is, this is opportunity for us. We would like to do a May 4. Okay, well, so we that's do, a Saturday. Then we have time to do that. If you get a letter indicating that they approve of the town granting the permit, we'll do it on April 25th or 22nd, whatever the meeting is. It, because I want to go ahead of that. Just think, because I spoke with the command, uh, he called me. Uh, I explained the situation. He told me the same thing that he told me right now that there's a it's very traffic road and the only way they can do it is the way they say to me is like in the sidewalk. But I explained to him that we're not looking for the sidewalk because by the sidewalk is everybody can go by walk and then you know just wait for the green line and just go. But we like to have impact in the community, a specific you know uh, own different uh, racial, you know, Spanish, afro America. No, uh, look, we got, let me yeah. just... You I got, understand that, but... You, Pastor, you got here late. We just read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine events. Some are runs, some of them are parades, some are other kinds of events. We got no criticism okay. from the police on these events. We will grant those permits. If you get that letter from the commanding officer stating what you said, that he'll give you the, the police protection you need, then fine, we will approve it. Oh, thank you. Okay? I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else here? Bob Colner. Yeah, can't hurt. Yeah. You're going to have to address this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, I'm Bob Collin. I live in Orchard Drive in Port Salonga. And uh, at the last meeting, we were talking about uh, canoe and kayak safety, and, and uh, Mr. Zolo uh, said that they uh, identified a specific spot that was the safest place to. Uh, Launch down the bluff, and uh, they were going to do increased signage and stuff. And I, I got some pictures I want to show you. Oh, you're going to hand them up. Hand them up. Give them to the. Please. Okay, the big sign, in front of this, that's the one you see coming down the road, and then they direct you on out to that little dock. And if you see the next picture, way down the end of the dock, you can see a little sign there. If you look in the water, you can see the currents brushing under the dock. So the next picture is taken halfway down, and the next picture is right there with the arrow pointing right there is where you launch the canoes. And it's a very dangerous spot. It's dangerous to launch a canoe or a kayak <coughs> in any dock, on any dock. Yeah. And, and at the end of that dock, the water's very deep, it's very fast, and those docks are worse than the average dock. Those are a new dock system, they put them out there, they got like a, a, a tunnel design, it's to relieve the pressure of the tide. The tide comes screeching down, it hits the dock, there's little tunnels under there and the water goes through and it don't push the dock over like happened in the past. But in relieving the pressure, it also creates turbulence. So uh, 
There's a lot of incidences down there with canoes and kayaks and jet skis and little boats getting rolled under the dock and sucked out the other side and blown out. It's an extremely dangerous spot at the end of that dock. So uh, I wanted to point that out to you guys. Uh, Mr. Zolo at the last meeting also Can said, I interrupt you? So what is, what is your point? There would be no launching of a kayak or canoe? Not at the end of the dock. Not that's, at the end of the dock, okay. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to do it? I'd okay, like, it's fine. You know, okay. I'm, I'm hearing <laughs> okay. you. Uh, at the last meeting, Mr. Zolo also said that they were going to give out permits to launch private canoes and kayaks and, and, and not give out permits to do the livery canoes on account of the private sector were more experienced. And I, I don't think the records would show that. I think we have a, the uh, canoe liveries have a better safety record. And uh, I mean, if you researched it a little bit, I'm sure you would see that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next one is this here. These two. They're both related. Mary Ann Stevens. Oh, boy. Hi, gentlemen. My name's Mary Ann Stevens. I live on Gingerbread Road. We moved there in 1998. There's about 48 houses that were built in our development, and I can tell you because my house is the one where they had the office, and it was the model house, and we used to lurk there, and many, many times we heard them repeating the same story, and everybody was asking about the businesses down at the in bottom of the hill there at Old Lawrence, Old Northport Road and Lawrence Road, what was going to, to happen with those? And, oh, don't worry, they're all going to, they're, it's all zoned residential and light industrial. And at the time, all you saw were a few, I, I guess, are concrete cisterns or something, you know, precast things. There were just a few of them lined up in an in a empty sand parking lot. And that was all there was really to be concerned about. And there was a lot of vegetation around the other side of the road. And basically, you didn't see anything. You didn't hear anything. And um, even though it still was, uh, it hadn't been developed to anything aesthetic, as we told, were told it would be, it wasn't a problem. Until the last two years, when it has deteriorated drastically, there have been times when KPE was in operation, even though I lived two blocks away on the far side of the road, I could not hear myself thinking my house was shaking from some of the activities they had there. I went to a winter concert up at uh, a Compsit Middle School uh, this past December when the air quality due to Jezco's mulch um, that was festering was so bad. Children were screaming, crying, dashing to their cars because they couldn't breathe and one child was throwing up in the school parking lot because the air quality was so miserable. Um, I'm very grateful that there's a temporary restraining order going on and things are quiet over there and I'm very glad to see the public safety fellows who we're thankful for. Um, and, but I'm very concerned that they're temporary and in fact this morning I was speaking to Peter Scully, the regional director of the DEC and I, I found out something I, I, I wasn't aware of and it, it was alarming to me that with all of the problems and all of the health threats regarding the um, horribly mismanaged mulch at a Jezco property. And by the way, I'm sure you gentlemen know that Jezco has um, uh, a long, long track record for decades now of repeated environmental violations. It's about the only thing that they're consistent about. But in any event, I understand that the restraining order, it only directs, uh, only affects one portion of Jezco's property that um, even though they are not allowed to take on new, new materials because of some of the heinous business operations that caused so much pollution and so many irritants this last fall. Uh, apparently on some parts of the property they are allowed to. Peter Scully himself told me only an hour or two ago that he spoke to Mr. Zolo just this Friday because he saw a <coughs> big huge reefer truck, uh, one of these covered jump trucks, bringing materials over to Jezco's property. And that Zolo told him, well, that's okay, we allow it because the restraining right. order only affects part of the property. Um, I went down there and I took over 60 photos and they're now on my Dropbox site and I've shared them with some other people in the task force and I called your offices and didn't yet get your email addresses, but I hope to get them and I would like you to look at the over 60 photos that I took without trespassing one cell of my body. This is just from the edge of the road. Now keep in mind, this is two blocks away from a high school and there are 
openings in the gate, some, in some places just because it's so rusted and deteriorated and neglected that it's open, and in some cases where they actually have pieces of the fencing down. So this is something that's an obvious danger to any kind of passersby, and I just want to, you'll see in my, <laughs> I think it's 62 photos, um, you'll see some of these things that I mention. And, um, there was a car running outside of KPE. So while public safety is, is keeping them from really operating things right now, there was a car running there with its headlights on and there's obviously somebody working to start things up as soon as public safety leaves. There's heavy machinery all over the place. You can't tell me any of that heavy machinery has anything to do with any sort of residential or light industry purposes. There are dumped tires. There's tubing, there's straight <laughs> scrap metal, broken pallets, glass, broken glass, sheets of glass waiting to be broken, wiring, PVC tubing, construction debris. These things litter for dozens of yards all along Old Northport Road. Um, there are dangerous, discarded, old, rusted, leaking Mrs. and Stevens, plastic drums. Mr. Stevens, yeah. I think we're aware of some of that, and I believe Jesco is in court. Am I speaking out of turn, Mr. Talent? No, well, I certainly have other things to describe, well, we, 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 but we, I'm happy well, to hear what you have to say. Well, I'd like to hear from town attorney. Are, are we in court with Jesco? Yes. We are. You are in, rec in court regarding a restraining order. From what Peter Scully tells me, it affects one portion of their property, but allows them to take on materials. Do we, and whilst Mr. Mr. Stevens, Scully described uh, what I'm not this, debating you. We want to be helpful to you. Okay. Do we have outstanding summonses that are going to be processed in court on Jesco? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. I can check where it's. Okay. On Our public safety people are hearing everything you're saying. Fine. And, and they'll go up there tomorrow. And I'd love to have their email addresses too because I will show them between 10 and 11 this morning. I took photos of big reefer truck. You can see the stages of it pulling into Jesco's property to deliver this. Apparently, despite this restraining order, they continually receive property. Okay. I also stepped up just a few steps into uh, um, some of the hillside, not on their property, onto the um, town property across the road, and you can see mulch piles in the back for as far as the eye can so see. Are you, are you, things are you, warm up. If are you mulch, saying that they are doing work, improper, illegal work, on property that's not part of the restraining order? Well, I don't. I could not see from walking by exactly where everybody's property begins and ends. But I can tell you, on Lawrence Road, on that first block between the corner of Old Northport Road and, you know, for the, the first several hundred yards, reefer covered, not uncovered, large filled reefer dump trucks are going on to Jesco's property to, and seemingly to make deliveries. What happened was I saw this truck go in there. I have a series of three or four photos of this truck turning in there sometime between 10 and 11 this morning. And um, then I went around the other side to take more pictures at KPE. You can see the dust cloud in one of my photos is that material was being dumped over there on that property. Okay. I also have another question. <laughs> uh, there's a sign outside Latiri's. It says, open to the public, bring your junk here. Most materials accepted, dumpsters for rent. How is that within residential or light industrial purposes? That does not sound like that sort of business to me. Um, there, are, there are trailers, trucks, boats, cars, all, and tons of heavy equipment, both probably recent new equipment and dilapidated old equipment rusting on, on, all, on both of the properties. Jesco, Jesco apparently is turning into um, a real first okay, class junkyard. Mrs. Stevens. You know, but, but my real point here is this is a pathetic a situ situation even if it were heavy industry. The idea that they're just zoned for residential and light industry. When you see these photos and you see what horrific blight this is, two blocks away from an elementary school, middle school, and high school, not to mention all of us neighbors that can't even afford our property taxes, I mean, they're so high. It, it, it's just so wrong. Smithtown can be such a nice, wonderful place. And it, it's just so wrong that these businesses that are not merely bad neighbors, they're atrocious neighbors that are a threat to the welfare of the community. It, well, can I just interrupt you? I, we're not going to have a long dialogue here. We've heard it before. Um, I think you've seen uh, the efforts of the Public Safety Department 
and the town attorney's office result in a restraining order on KPA? Yes, they have. I, I don't know the strategies they employ, but as I once again said, public safety people are, are monitoring your speech, and I'm sure that tomorrow they'll be out on that. I and hope so. Confer with the town attorney and decide the course of action. And what is, it was this common knowledge? When I, was I just missing something that oh, the well, restraining order on Jezco was only for a portion of their property and the same offensive antics that they've been carrying out before, they can still do just on a smaller portion I of their property? I can't answer that question. Maybe the town attorney can, and he may be limited if he can. Can you? Well, I didn't handle the case, but I, I am familiar with the, the property is divided by a number of different companies that own the site. So okay. the restraining order against one, there are other portions of the site that the restraining order would not cover. So then the next question will be, can we get a restraining order on those other sites? But maybe you'll wait investigation by. Yes. Okay? Thank you, that, gentlemen. That, I think that's reasonable. Right. Well, okay. I, it seems to me that, you know, it is a, the, the horrific smell that we were dealing with from the mulch in the fall, Thankfully, some of that material processing stopped. But part of the problem, part of the, part of the solution for the last few months has simply been colder weather. As things warm up, yes. and it's just well, it keeps sneaking in dumps, uh, you know, uh, to other portions of the property. We still have an ongoing problem, and the restraining, restra restraining orders have to be issued to all businesses involved over there. All portions of the land is problematic all over there, and they have to become permanent. Okay. Thank we you hear so you. Much. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Tom Universad. Tom Ovzak, 31 Springbriar Lane, Kings Park, New York. I'm here also kind of reciprocating with uh, regarding KPE. One, I'd like to thank Public Safety for doing an excellent job. I mean, they, they really have been out there day in, day out. I've stopped there several times, and there's always a car on site. There's always some, some of their monitoring. It's just sad that we have to actually have to use those resources yeah. to go ahead and uh, monitor a company to make sure that they're in, in compliant. When we had a TRO in place, they were just operating business as usual. I mean, we, the residents, were the only people doing what Public Safety was doing now. Yeah. Um, and they were in clear violation. Now there's actually a marked official car sitting there. It's only now that, that they are somewhat temporary uh, uh, in compliant. I mean, they're not having any sort of operations going on, but they still have heavy uh, equipment on site, but they're not actually engaging in uh, sand mining and everything else that they were actually doing, because I actually have physical evidence of that. Um, as far as the material on site, I don't know what was going on with that, but I do feel that the material should stay on site, should not be offloaded. I think the material shows proof. It shows proof of uh, evidence of the dumping, the mining, the concrete crushing, the composting. Um, by removing th that material, you're actually just removing the evidence. Um, I do believe that material should actually stay there you know, until a uh, decision is made by, by the courts. Well, um, no, but no one's going to allow it to move until the court makes its decision. Okay. Okay. I, just, I mean, I, well, I didn't know. I, I tried try to get a hold yeah. of Mr. Zolo. I know he was on vacation, uh, but I tried to get a hold of him before he left. You, you uh, know, uh, Mrs. Stevens uh, referenced it. It's a high cost for the town of town to employ around the clock offices. Yes. Even while there's a restraining order, and people should be abiding by that. So we're committed to that, and it's, going, it's a heavy burden. It's way over budget for that public safety department. But we'll do it as long as, I guess, until the judge makes his final decision. Well, I mean, in, in speaking about as far as public safety, like I said, I do want to thank them, you know, the, the, for, for the job they've done. I do feel that we could probably alleviate that and uh, take them off of the 24-7 watch. Uh, I don't think that they should go back the way it was before, where you should call them up and it should take, you know, if, uh, by the time the truck leaves, it comes to go. Or, but well, if they were, were to go there randomly, would you and your neighbors object if we did take them off and had them go randomly? I believe that we would be uh, in okay, agreement well with that. that. If you, enough of you tell us that, then we can save some money and you guys can be the guardians until the judge makes the decision. Just as long as, like I said, we, we feel that, that, sure. that it's not just the way it was before. You make a phone call, then they get, then it's, you know, that they drive over there. We still don't have that, that of calling public safety. But if they can, you know, in their schedule, say, okay, you know, on yes, Tuesday from 12 to 4, you go here, 
and sure. just periodically, you know, sit, you sit on site. But it doesn't have to be 24-7. I understand that. Thank you. Uh, just uh, one, one other more? thing also on, on the, the, the Jezco property. I do understand that, you know, that, that, that there is something here going on, you know, thankfully. Uh, now, the other issue is, you know, Jezco does skirt the issue with because, you know, it's divided by quarters or fifths, uh, and they still take in material. Uh, you know, getting the restraining order against all parties associated, with, you know, with, with that with that uh, piece of property. Uh, I'm sure we've all driven past it. I mean, they they are the the, the junkyard of Kings Park. Uh, I, I mean, I I took two pictures of an overlay of the Deer Park strip of, of actually auto body junkyards and Jesco, and you could barely compare the two. Yeah. Uh, they, you know, they 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 are absolutely identical. Um, Time's up. Oh. <laughs> well, whatever. I just want to like to thank the, the, the public safety for, for doing the job that they did. But, uh, yeah, following through on Jezco and getting the uh, uh, the TRO full and strength. And then I'll get back to you regarding so you'll get the, the we'll public safety. Yes. Thank you. 5K of the printed agenda to supervise it to enter in a collective bargaining agreement with the Smithtown Administrative Guild in accordance with the memorandum of agreement executed by the supervisor and SAG on March 1st, 2013, on a form approved by the town attorney. Councilman Malloy? No. Councilman Creighton? No. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Motion, motion. to carry. Correct. I'll move to close. No, we're at the same. Yeah. Second. Council, uh, Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Malloy? Yes.